Metaplasia is the change of one differentiated cell type into another. This is an example of metaplasia in the renal pelvis. The epithelium of the renal pelvis is normally urothelium or transitional epithelium. And this you can see on the right. And as the picture moves towards the left, you can see that this is changing into a columnar mucus secreting epithelium. So this is an example of interstinal metaplasia in the renal pelvis. Metaplasia is caused by local environmental influences on the tissue and it may be reversible. In addition, occasionally it may be part of normal development, for example, squamous metaplasia of the cervix occurring at puberty. A really good example of a local environmental influence is the effect of cigarette smoke on the epithelium of the bronchi. Metaplasia is often initiated by chronic cellular damage and repair and it may occur in epithelium or mesenchyme and it converts a delicate cell type into a more robust cell type. An example is the ciliated columnar epithelium of the bronchi being converted to stratified squamous epithelium. This is an example of squamous metaplasia in the bladder. Urothelium lining the bladder may convert to stratified squamous epithelium if there is chronic irritation by stones or parasites such as schistosomiasis or chronic infection. The area of squamous metaplasia is easy to see because it is carotenizing and white. Uh, another term for it is leukoplakia and you can see it by the arrow. Some examples of common types of metaplasia in epithelium are ciliated columnar epithelium converting to stratified squamous epithelium in the bronchi of smokers, stratified squamous epithelium changing to columnar epithelium in the esophagus in gastroesophageal reflux disease, and as discussed earlier, transitional epithelium converting to stratified squamous epithelium in the bladder when there is chronic infection, schistosomiasis or stones. Here are another couple of examples of metaplasia. The first is pyloric type metaplasia in long-standing Crohn's disease of the small bowel and the next picture shows interstinal metaplasia in the stomach. This is often associated with helicobacter infection. There are problems, however, with metaplasia. The metaplastic epithelium does not carry out the specialised function of original epithelium. So, for example, going back to the bronchus, bronchi are normally lined by columnar mucus secreting epithelium that protects the bronchi and the cilia waft the mucus out of the airways. Stratified squamous epithelium does not carry out this function. Not only that, but as a result of persistent environmental influences, the epithelium may become dysplastic and eventually neoplastic, and that is why squamous cell carcinoma arises in the bronchus when there has been squamous metaplasia. This is a bronchial biopsy. On the right of the picture there is dysplastic metaplastic stratified squamous epithelium, and on the left of the picture you can see infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma. This is a bladder biopsy showing an invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, you can see this on the left side of the picture and you can see it's squamous cell carcinoma because of the keratin pearls the tumour is forming. And on the right side of the picture you can see the metaplastic stratified squamous epithelium that the carcinoma is arising from. Thank you.